We're talking about courage, and a lot of you probably weren't in our youth class like when we were having over there, so I'm going to kind of do a little review of some of the stuff we were talking about, and so hopefully it's, it's a good lesson here today. We're talking about courage, courage to obey in particular today if we get that far. Um, go to our next slide. Why, am I, why was I deciding to do a thing on courage? Well, I mean, actually, I was trying to think about what to do for the youth class, and I heard someone on the radio, he's a politician, and he just said this saying, it's probably mostly true, it's probably not 100% true. He's a politician, of course, not always true. Um, he, was, he, he, was, he belonged to my, my uh, political party, so of course he was right about everything. Just kidding. <laughs> um, this is what he said. He said, there are a lot of leaders, but people don't follow leadership, they follow courage. And that's what he said. And I'm not saying that's 100% true, but I mean, there are a lot of people that have good administrative skills and good leadership type skills, but a lot of times, I mean, especially when we're in tough times, they're not necessarily looking for that. They're just looking for someone with courage. And it's really important. And that's, all I'm saying is this, is that people look up to courage. Like even if, a lot of times, even if you don't respect the, you know, the person at all, if that person is courageous, that's usually something that someone will say, wow, they'll respect courage, usually. Even if they don't agree with the person and the stand they're taking, you'll usually respect that about the person. I mean, so I'm just going to say courage is something that is really, really important. Go to the next um, slide. So what is courage? This is how I defined it, and I did look at some other definitions of it, but this is this is what I call, this is what I define as courage. The will or energy to complete an action despite difficulties, obstacles, or fears. It's what causes you to do something that maybe you normally wouldn't or something like that. Because if it's something you normally do, it doesn't take courage for you to do that. You know? Now, anyways, so that's really what courage, I'm defining courage as the will to go on further despite your obstacles, despite whatever is coming against you, despite all the odds against you. And that's kind of what I define as courage. If you guys have a better definition, please let me know, and I'll, I will change it. So, you guys have a better definition? Okay, so this is kind of what I want to go into, is where does courage come from? Well, where does it come from? Well, it can either come from inside, I have internal forces inside of you, or it can come from outside, outside you. Um, so, like, I have internal forces. That would, I would say this, like, and this is where ideally we want courage to come from. We want it to come from within our hands, from within our heart. And that's how we want. We want to be courageous people. And, and, and you know, we want to have, have courage because that's what we are. We're courageous and all that stuff. That's... But that can take time to develop that type of courage. And, and I think when you look at different things, there's different, there's different factors that can motivate people to have courage. Like, for instance, like if someone has like a really strong duty to their country and duty to others or duty to their kids, I guess you could say love, that will cause them to do something that they normally would not do. So, I mean, that comes from the heart. It's that love that you have for your kids or for your country or whatever, that's one thing that can motivate courage. When that love is greater than your fears, when that love is greater than your doubts and your inhibitions. Or it could be faith. If you have confidence in, you know, in God or your commander that's telling you to charge or advance, um, you can do that. You can, because that's, that's like a faith thing. That's like a heart thing. That's an internal thing. Um, I have hope in there, you know, maybe you don't think that you, you don't know that you can win, you don't know that it's going to do this, but you have a hope that everything's going to work out all right, and sometimes that hope can lead people to go even, you know, and, and do a great act of courage. I have principles. So, so all I'm going to talk about there is sometimes courage comes from within. We have to. I'll social up against the wall, so. Okay. So another place that courage can come from is from external forces. What's that mean? Okay, well, sometimes courage doesn't come from you. 
Sometimes, sometimes Zach gets courage because his coach is like, you can do this. You can go. You can defeat the enemy. No, 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 no. Pretty close. Go get a concussion. And Zach's like, yeah. Yep. And then he runs out there. It doesn't come from Zach. It comes from someone else. Sometimes you get courage from other people. So sometimes courage doesn't come from you. It comes from other people. Like other people motivate you. Or, you know, the evangelist says, you can live for God. You can repent here at the altar. You can do it. And that other person gives you courage. So sometimes courage comes from other people. Then I also have, I have grace of God. Sometimes courage comes from God directly. Sometimes it's not us. Sometimes it's the Holy Ghost that's in us. And sometimes, you know, it's not, and that's the awesome thing. Sometimes when our character is not enough, when our heart is not good enough, the Holy Ghost can give us the courage that we need to make that decision. And that's just like a little, that's like a little bit of insight into where courage comes from comes from. And if you guys have anything more to add about that, you courageous young people, which I hope you all are, because God has not given us the spirit of fear. And so really, if you have a young if you're a young person that has the Holy Ghost, you should be some of the most courageous people in the entire world. So I've got some courageous young people in here. And some of you really indeed are. Some of you have went through situations that I for sure wouldn't want. Sometimes, some of you have dealt with things that I for sure wouldn't want to deal with. But you have courage to do that. Okay, so let's go to the next one. What's it say? Let's talk about. Okay, where does courage from come from? Which we've kind of talked about this, but where actually the word courage came from? It came from the Latin word for heart. That's where the word courage came from. So you can say that's where courage is all about. It's, it's about your heart. It's about your character. It's about that. And actually, I mean, if you're if you speak Spanish, you, it's easier to realize that because the, you know, the Spanish word for heart is corazón, and it sounds close to courage. It's close to that Latin word for heart. That's what it is. That's where the word courage came from. And you can say that. That's really that's really where we want courage to come from. We want it to come from our heart, from us, from our faith, our love, our principles. That's where we want courage to come from. Um, Okay, next one. Okay, we've kind of talked about this before, but we'll go on. When does an action require courage to complete it? Some of you guys, we've already talked about this, but what do you guys think? When do you need courage to complete an action? You need a sound. sound. Well, if you... That that's 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 a clue there. You're you're in the right direction because a lot of times we, a lot of times we need courage when something is completely new or foreign to us. That's a lot of times when we need it. Um, when it, we're gonna do something new, like if um, if right now I asked TJ to come up here to teach this class, um, that would probably take some courage on his part, unless he is a used he, he might be used to making. He may do this completely fine. But probably without study and all that stuff, he's probably going to need a lot of courage to come up here to, to do that. And that's if, and that's natural because if he's not used to teaching this class. He's not used to that. And sometimes that something new, you need courage. And so, all right, what kinds of actions are courageous? What would you say? Could be. It could be courageous. I mean, it takes that. It takes it to get started. A lot of times, getting something new takes courage to get to get going. Like riding that, riding that bike for the first time, it probably took some courage for you, or a little bit of, you know, introducing yourself to someone you don't know. Yeah, that can that can take courage. But the, here's the thing: is when you begin to do it more, you don't really need that courage. And that's kind of like how life is, really. We, we, can, we can learn to, to be courageous. In fact, this courage can be taught, I mean, just by stepping out and things like that. Like, it can be hard to make friends at first, but if you step out and do it, you can, you can do it. 
And sometimes that does take courage. But Although I wouldn't say that's a particularly courageous thing. Like, I'm not going to say, start singing, oh, Eliza made a new friend. <clears throat> Did you ever know that you were my hero? And I'm not going to push, you know, we don't really think that's... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things that we do that take courage, but they aren't. We wouldn't necessarily consider it heroic or super courageous. But the truth of the matter is, every single one of us has to have courage. You know, there are people that have fears. Like, have you heard of agoraphobia? Yeah, when you're afraid of ogres. No, it's you're afraid of going outside. Homeschool. <coughs> there are people that are absolutely terrified to death of going outside of their house. And so I would say, you know, it would take courage for that person to actually step outside their house and learn to con conquer their fear. But if KC does that, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be singing him, did you ever know you're my hero? I'm not going to sing that. KC, <laughs> because, because he decides to go outside. Um, but all, the only point I want to make is that a lot of times courage starts small. It, take, it starts small doing that. And we all need courage just to, to function. And it's something when we get used to. Anytime we step out on something new, it takes courage. Um, okay, if an act takes courage to complete it, is it courageous? That's kind of the same thing. It's not particularly courageous. Well, what's your, de what's your but definition of courageous and courage? I'm just asking you all. Such a different word. What's your definition? Something courageous would be a firefighter running into a burning building. <laughs> yeah. It would be courageous for you to do that, wouldn't it? <laughs> But if, that's a, if that person is used to doing that, it's still a courageous act. I would still say, say it is. It but it's, it probably doesn't take them as much courage as the first time. And that's one thing I want to say. Courage can be developed on your part. So some of you that are afraid to witness and afraid to talk to people, afraid to make friends, sometimes it just means you just need to go out there and do it. And that's a, the that's a way a lot of things are. Sometimes you just have to go out there and do it. And you'll develop the confidence to be able to, to do that type of thing eventually. Probably. Maybe not necessarily. But, I mean, I'll just tell you, Neil, the first time I had to teach a Sunday school class in front of eight and nine-year-olds, I was probably a little terrified. Sometimes you all scare me. But, <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, the longer you do this, you don't, you just think like, you don't care. It's like, hey, I'm in a burning building full of burning young people. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm fine. I'm just kidding. Um, go to the next, the problem. let's go to the next slide. <laughs> okay, here's another question. Is courage always positive? No. No, probably not. Probably takes courage. For the most part, courage is a positive thing. I would say yes, but obviously if it's false courage, like if I'm courageous because of a false idea or a false hope or something like that, it's not particularly that good a thing for me. Why? Like, like for instance, a suicide bomber, is their, their act courageous? I wouldn't say it's a good thing, though. <laughs> Maybe. It's not necessarily a good thing. Um, so I'm just going to say this. A lot of times courage, all, it depends on your heart that you have. You want, you want your courage to spring forth out of the love that you have for God and for others, the faith that you have in him, the, you know, and, and, and it really depends on the action that is done. I mean, like for instance, you, you might say it takes courage for me to be rebellious against that's not necessarily a good thing, though. Um, um, depending on what my parents, it's never good to be rebellious. Never good to be rebellious. Um, there, there are times that we, we may have to disobey our parents, you know, if there's willingness to murder our aunt or something like that. Then we need to, but we don't have to be rebellious to them. <laughs> But I'm just saying, like, courage is a good thing. It's not always positive, but a lot of it depends on where it comes from. It comes from your heart. And obviously, sometimes, you know, you can get bad encouragement from people. Like, peer pressure, we can call that. That's kind of a bad form of courage, you might say. All right, next, next one. Okay, here's another question to ask you all. Is courage the absence of fear? No. No. Your kids would say it. 
Sometimes. For the most part. Sometimes. Sometimes you. And the, the reality is a lot of times. What if someone's afraid of you? A lot of times we have natural fears or doubts, I guess. And what really makes it courageous is not when there's no fear at all. But it's when you do have fear. You know. Going up there to sing that solo. And you, and you do it anyways even though you think that you look stupid. And think that you sound stupid. And think that you'll fail miserably. That's, that's, cur that's courageous to do that. When you're up there and I've been there and your hands like shaking. Because <laughs> you're so nervous. You don't know why. But you're nervous. That takes courage. And that takes more courage than that little, you know, three-year-old that can get up there and just sing the mic with no problem at all. Like Zach's sister, Michaela, can just, hey, she's, she's giving the mic and she'll sing. It's not courage on her part because she has no fear <laughs> at all. That's um, she just likes to scream in microphones. She, she's so, okay, let's go to the next, next one. Okay, this was kind of our key verse for our series that is we're kind of going from the book of Joshua. And this is what the Lord was telling Joshua in Joshua 1, 6 through 9. It says, Be strong and have a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. And I'll just go down to verse 9. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. And if you read jo Joshua chapter 1, it's, it repeats itself time and time again. God tells Joshua, hey, I'm on your side. Hey, the promised land is yours. But this is what you need. You need to be strong and courageous. 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 It's, it's, it's like that repetitive. Now, he doesn't do that as directly. As do. <laughs> it's spread out a little bit more. He also says follow the commandments in there too. He says that as well. But I mean, that's really the emphasis that God is saying. And I wanted to say that in a lot of ways, I know that was God's promise there to Joshua. But in a lot of ways, that applies to us here today, too. Let's see what my next slide says. God had made promises to Joshua that he would have success, but he warns Joshua multiple times that he needed courage in order to inherit the, pro the promises. And I want to tell you, God has made us a lot of promises, too. Actually, promises like Joshua. I mean, just as real as the promises that God made to Joshua, God gave us those promises that we would succeed, that we could be saved, that, that we could be have salvation, that, that we could go to heaven. God made promises like that to us. Those are promises. But a lot of times the only thing keeping us back from achieving those promises is we need courage to do it. We need courage to succeed. Because Really, God gave Joshua all those promises, and it was true. But he says, the thing you need is courage. That's what you need to make it. And we have a bunch of promises that God has made to us as well. But if we're going to inherit heaven, if we're going to inherit the promised land, it's going to take strength and courage on our part. And that's really all it takes. God will do the work. We can't save ourselves. We can't make it. I can't strap, you know rockets to my shoes and make it to heaven. I wish I could. You might get those way down. Oh, you make it to Alright, let's yeah. go to the next slide. You might make it there on the way down. Yeah. Let's go to the next one, too. Okay, some things I want to point out about Joshua. Here's the thing about Joshua. Joshua had went through many of the same experiences that everyone else in Israel had. Uh, for instance, he had seen the Red Sea parted, but so had everybody else. He'd seen, he'd ate some of the manna from heaven, but so had everybody else. He'd seen lots of those miracles that Moses had done, but so had everybody else. And really, what made Joshua different from these other people is he learned about the experiences. 
And I'm just going to say that's something that's so, so very important. A lot of us go through things and situations where we can see that, you know, God is moving in our lives and God is doing things. But we have to learn from those experiences. And Joshua is someone that learned from those experiences that they went through. And that's what separated him from others. I mean, there were other things, too, I mean, that he did. And he was always willing to remember and learn from his experiences that, that he had. All right, next slide. All right, we need to wrap it up. So. All right. Joshua, he was the leader after Moses. Moses is like the greatest leader in history. It's like, it's like being the president after George Washington. Nobody will, nobody will remember you if you're the president right after George Washington. Unless you're a nerd like me. Um, <laughs> then you would remember the next guy. Um, but that's the, the way. It can be hard to follow a great leader. And Moses was a great leader. And But God had promised him that I would be with you. And he told me, but you're going to have to be courageous. And here's the thing. Joshua had to do some things that he had to follow some strange, strange commandments from the Lord. Because God didn't fight the battles like everybody else did. All the other nations would. Like, for instance, Jericho. God gave Joshua a plan to go against the city of Jericho. And the city of Jericho was a great city. Go another slide, maybe two slides. There's like a picture. There it is. Okay, this is like a model of what Jericho looked like. It was a city built on a hill, and they had two walls that you had to breach to go through there. And, you know, Joshua didn't have a professional army. He had a lot of people, but they were just slaves from Egypt. That's what they were. And Joshua had to go up against this city. In fact, as most people think that, I mean, I don't, I don't quite, that's just an idea of what it looked like. Some people think that they actually had something over the top of those walls. And I've heard that they did chariot races on the top of the walls around the city because they were so thick around there. So, But there were actually two. There was like an exterior wall and an interior wall. And God gave Joshua a battle plan to go against this great city of Jericho. But what was his battle plan? Well, it's pretty much, I won't go into all the details because I gotta get out of here. It was pretty much go around the city once a day for seven days. Then on the seventh day, go around the city seven times. And at the end, <coughs> go completely silent around it. And then at the end of your seven times, scream out, Blow the trumpets and praise the Lord. And then the walls are going to fall down and the city is yours. That's kind of a wild battle plan. It took some trust. It took some courage for him to follow that type of thing. How did Joshua have that courage? Well, it's because he had faith in God. And he'd seen what God had done in the past. And sometimes that's where courage comes from. And a lot of times, we have, it takes courage for us to obey things from the Lord. Sometimes God's plans for our lives don't necessarily make a lot of sense if we're just thinking at it and looking at it with our own human understanding. And, but I'm just going to tell you this. When you trust God, you're not just trusting Lincoln Hughes. I mean, God knows a little bit more than Lincoln Hughes, and God's a little bit more powerful than Lincoln Hughes. A lot more, actually. <laughs> uh, so sometimes in life, we'll, we'll face situations where it takes courage to obey. When it doesn't look like it makes sense. But I'm just going to tell you this. If we, I know in whom I have believed. We have a God that is worth trusting in, a God that is worth believing in. And sometimes it takes courage to obey him. And I just want to tell you this. It is always worth it. You can trust in him. You can put your faith in him. And you can put your confidence in him. And that's what Joshua did. He followed the battle plan. The walls of Jericho, Jericho fell down flat. They had an easy, easy time overwhelming the enemy and defeating them because of the plan that God had given them. And I'm just going to tell you, God's plan is the best plan for you. In your life. So, have courage to obey the Lord. Get out of here.
you are dismissed. Thank you for being here. So glad to have you with us.